Welcome to the Lake District. If you're joining me for the first time, hi, I'm Caroline and I've spent the last week here in the Lake District going on some epic and stunning adventures with my partner Andy. We've conquered the nail-biting Via Ferrata on the Honister Pass and scrambled across sharp edge to reach the top of Blencathra. In a bit of a heatwave, we tackled a circular walk to Helm Crag and once the weather cooled, a short but steep climb up to Raven Crag. We've also thoroughly enjoyed the beauty found in the Borrowdale Valley and have undertaken hikes to the smallest Wainwright, Castle Crag, on the east side of the valley to Waller Crag, spotting a slow worm on the trail, and to the west, we've hiked the popular Cat Bells. We've also ambled along to the beautiful Fry's Crag Bench to take in one of the prettiest views found in the Lake District, and have also taken the boat across the lake too. Living in London, it's not been possible to go on any of these adventures as day trips, and we've instead stayed in a gorgeous Airbnb barn conversion, and today I'll take you on a tour of it. Today I'm going to be sharing with you our Airbnb cottage that we're renting for the week, just in the north of the Lake District. If you've watched any of my other Airbnb cottage tours or Shepherd's Hut tours or any of the other sorts of places that we've stayed in when we've gone away on holiday, you might be looking at this thinking, oh, it seems a little bit nicer than where they normally stay. We've gone with a slightly nicer property, but the location isn't quite as good and therefore it's come in still on budget. The area that I'm standing in at the moment is the living room. There's a beautiful sofa and you can just tell that the whole thing has been done with an interior designer. Really nice set up with a coffee table and I like how they've left the original wood on the top but they've painted some of the undersides to it and that's something that goes throughout with the dining table there's a stall upstairs as well not that we've used it because we're here right at the very end of summer but there is a log burner and I can imagine if we come here in colder months that would be absolutely lovely to come back to after a day of walking on the fells when you get really really cold you come in you light the fire and just warm up next to it. Hopefully they have provided us with things like kindling and newspapers and then you've also got logs as well. We have stayed in some Airbnb properties where they've not provided any of that, even though they've had a working log burning stove. And the idea is, is that it's a little bit cheaper and then you go and purchase it yourself from say a petrol station nearby. So it's nice for the convenience, but I suppose we've probably paid for this even though we've not ended up using it. So it's kind of like a double edged sword. They've also got a TV that's hung up off of the wall. We haven't really had much of a chance to just sit down and watch the TV because we've been so go, go, go and wanting to get out and see the Lake District as much as we can. But very helpfully on a shelf just underneath the TV are a handful of guidebooks and an OS map, which is always great because it means that we don't have to buy an OS map for every single place that we visit. Those, unlike the TV, have been used pretty much on a daily basis. The next part of the open living kitchen diner is the kitchen diner and this is definitely where we have spent a lot of time especially for breakfast and in the evenings. There's a really small table here but it is actually one of those ones where you can pull it out and there's a little bit underneath. The kitchen's relatively well equipped so I suppose I'll start over in this corner. We have got a microwave. We've got chopping boards, a tray for if you wanted breakfast in bed upstairs, the sort of typical fruit or egg basket, depending on what you wanted to put in there. We've got a pot here that's full of all kinds of like mixing utensils for when you're cooking in pots and pans and whatnot. There's also a fan. When we got here on the Saturday last weekend, it was quite hot, so it's quite nice to come in and the fan was just blowing cool air out onto us. There's then a full oven, so you've got a four ring hob on the top. You've got a smaller oven grill at the top part of this oven, and then there's a bigger one down at the bottom. We've then got the three drawers, which have got your standard utensils in there. We've got things like sieve, colander, some trays. This cupboard up here, has then got all different kinds of things such as a gratin dish so you could make things like pasta bakes. You've got some deep bowls. Do you realize, I'm not really too sure, I suppose you like Chinese noodles maybe in these ones. Got a couple of pasta bowls which we've used when we've had pasta on evenings. Some further trays at the back, they've not come out into use. Things like teapots. There's a gravy boat. There's a milk jug, egg cups for breakfast, I guess. Even some mixing bowls if you wanted to do some baking and there is a sieve as I say. On the countertop, 
top we've obviously got a kettle for things like teas and coffees and in there we've got coffee, tea and sugar which was again all provided by our Airbnb hosts so that was really nice that we weren't having to lug all of that stuff with us. And in fact actually I'm going along the kitchen but I'm going to back up just a second because one thing that I forgot to mention is that in this cupboard here they've provided us with salt, pepper and oil, tomato ketchup, brown sauce, vinegar, balsamic vinegar and also a bisto for gravy which has been wonderful and the gravy boat in there reminded me that they provided us with the gravy. I mentioned about the dishwasher before this is always a godsend when you're on holiday but it's just a slimline one. Nice big sink with a drying rack because again sometimes when you're in these smaller properties it will be lacking on a drying rack. Underneath here we have got frying pan, wok, three different size pans, Final cupboard, looks like a cupboard, but it is in fact an integrated fridge. And what's really nice about this fridge is that there's also a freezer compartment up at the top. So we've been able to put things like ice cubes in there, great for cooling down our eggs when we've boiled them for our ham and egg sandwiches. Ham and egg sandwich. Ham and egg sandwiches. Ham and egg sandwiches. Ham and egg sandwiches. Ham and egg sandwiches. What are we having? Ham and egg sandwiches. Ham and egg sandwiches. <laughs> Exposed out on the end here, you've then got some of the more fancy plates, side plates, bowls, so mostly the china ones that look a little bit like this, and as well as a jug and again some glasses like fancy wine glasses and champagne glasses too. I've forgotten one other thing that was in this corner here. They also have a slow cooker, so if you wanted to go out for an all day hike, you could put a whole load of stuff in the slow cooker go out, do your hike, and when you come back, your dinner's pretty much made, and all you have to do is, I don't know, bung some like pasta or some rice into one of the pans, and jobs are good in. So this is the one and only bedroom, but it's really quite palatial, and what I absolutely adore is the fact that this ceiling is slanted and you've got these beautiful wooden beams and the same interior design with those oranges and maybe blues and the same patterns runs throughout with the throw cushions that are on the bed and the cushion that's on the armchair. I really like as well how the bedside tables are just floating off of the wall and then the bedside lamps to be able to read in bed are actually attached onto the wall and it just gives it a bit more of like a a spacious feeling. Behind the door they've left us with a coat hanger. For example this dress has been hanging up there for the whole week waiting for and you might have thought oh you're a little bit dressed up you're normally in hiking clothes and that's because tonight we're actually going to the village pub for dinner. The village pub is a Michelin starred restaurant so I did think make sure that you pack something nice in order to be able to go to a nice establishment. Got a chest of drawers which has been great we've just been able to unpack all of our clothes really and then it doesn't feel like you're living out of a suitcase you can just open them up each day and grab whatever you need just like you would at home and these have got beautiful lining inside of them as well another thing that i really love i've talked about this before in previous airbnb properties but they've also got a dressing table with a mirror here and again another really luxurious touch to it is the leather armchair so it's spacious enough to be able to have that there is a second tv in here which is one more tv than what we even have at home we've just got the one in our living room the view is really just like over countryside. It actually overlooks a cattle farm, so quite often we do actually see the cattle because just around the corner from the window, I believe it's where the cows go in for their milking. So that's actually been quite cool just to look out onto because I'm very much a city girl. I did not grow up in the countryside, I grew up in suburbia. So just getting to see a working farm like that's actually been really quite good. And I think all that's left now to show you guys is the bathroom. last but by no means least the bathroom is a fairly bog standard bathroom if i'm being quite honest with you but it definitely serves a purpose we've got a corner shower but i would say that it's definitely a bigger corner shower than the smallest ones that you can get the shower head it's not one of those rainfall ones whilst it doesn't look overly impressive i can tell you that it's got plenty of hot water and it's got really good shower or water pressure so there were no complaints over that our Airbnb hosters provided us with shower gel, although interestingly not shampoo or conditioner, but we did know that when we were purchasing it. Toilet, you need it, it does what you need it to do. Really nice sink, which again has got the same shade of grey as what you know the door surrounds have got, and when they've upcycled that furniture, it's the same shade of it. I like how this almost looks 
old, you know, an old mirror, maybe sort of Victorian inspired, but it's really nice how they've been able to blend that modern with the older stuff. The other thing that I really like is that the radiator in here is a towel radiator. So it's meant that every time we've got out of the shower and we grab our towel, it's lovely and toasty and warm. As I said at the beginning, this cottage is a little bit out of the Lake District. So it is to the north. We have to drive through three other villages before we hit the A66. But once you get onto that A66, it's obviously really, really fast because it is a 60 mile an hour road. And therefore you can get across from the east to the west or vice versa of the northern part of the Lake District really quite quickly. So whilst we've been up here, it was a little bit of a drive to get to the Honest Slate Mine to do the Via Ferrata. Probably Probably about an hour that was the longest drive day for us and the following day we then hiked Blencathra which was very close we just pulled up on a lay-by on the A66 then the next couple of days were spent around the Derwent water area in Borrowdale so we parked up in Keswick and took the launch which is the boat across the lake and hiked the cat bells the following day we drove to the National Trust's Great Wood car park and hiked Walla Crag and then also wandered along the lake to Friars Crag the next day we then took a little bit of a detour and went over to Grasmere and we hiked up Helms Crag and then today we went back to the Borrowdale area and we hiked up Castle Crag. If you are interested because we booked it through Airbnb what I will do is I will leave a link specifically to this property in the comments section below. What I would love to know is what are your thoughts on this place? Please do let me know in those comments below. And if you were wondering how dinner went, we opted for the six course taster menu that began with a rosemary and sea salt focaccia with a romesco sauce. The second dish consisted of a Jombie Hall rare breed pork shoulder served with celery pickle, smooth celeriac and toasted hazelnuts. The third dish sounded weird on paper but tasted amazing. A smoked Jersey Royal Tureen with blackcurrant balsamic, onions and watercress. Next up was the Mary Port Place with a vermouth butter sauce, langoustine scampi and crubeche, an amazing French twist on tartar sauce. The final savoury dish was Pringle House lamb served with wild mushrooms, cocoa beans, salsa verde and whilst we hadn't expected them as per the menu, we were treated to a faggot too. For dessert, we were treated to a souffle something I always find tricky to make and this was complemented with damson sauce and a lime sorbet. Much like the unexpected faggots, with the bill came a little wooden box and inside were a couple of decadent macarons with a hidden raspberry filling. It was a delightful way to end our trip in the lakes.